So what do you do when you have a bunch of parts lying around your shop collecting dust and you don't want to get rid of them? Well, do something creative with them. Okay, so here's my plan. I have a couple of parts left over from a Mustang that I was restoring a few years ago. What I was going to do was take the license plate cover, put it into a board like this, take this piece, set it in there like that, and then I was going to run some LED lights in the, behind it, but I have the LED lights, but I don't have the controller for the LED lights. And I didn't feel like ordering them and waiting for the parts to come, so I decided to change my plans. So stick around and I'll show you what I'm going to do. Okay, so I had to stop the cut here for a moment because I realized I made a mistake. This was just taking way too long for it to cut. What I've done is I ramped the speed up from 28 inches per minute to 32 inches per minute, which is not really much faster, but what I've done is I've increased the depth of the cut from a 0 0.023 of an inch to 0 0.05 of an inch. And with a bigger bit like this, it'll be able to handle cutting it. Okay, so I decided to stop the cut again because I wanted to make another design change on here. And I'm doing that for two reasons. One, I want to make the oval just a little bit deeper. And two, I wanted to show you that uh, you're not limited to the program to make the design and go ahead with the complete cut. You can stop it anywhere you like along the way. So I want to show you how to do that. So first of all, I have my design. I finished cutting at the circle when it was done. And before it started moving over to the oval, I stopped it. Now you can do a couple of different things. You can left click and hold and drag over the circle, hit delete, and it's gone. Make your design change on the oval. Like I'm gonna make it just a little bit deeper, which I've already done. And then all you need to do is finish your cutting. And if you want to save this, come back and hit Control Z and the circle will come back. The other way of doing this is by hitting File, make a copy, it makes another copy, and all you have to do is the same thing, left click and hold on the circle, and then delete. Before I start cutting the next piece on the CNC, I'm going to use a trim router with a quarter inch round over bit to trim the edge. And I find the CNC table is a perfect place to do that. But before you do that, take a scrap piece of wood like the one that came off of it and set your bit depth first. Now I'm going to do the same thing like I did on the last piece. Before I remove this from the router table, I'm going to take my trim router and a quarter inch bit. I'm going to round over the edges on the top and one other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to round over the edge on the bottom. It's just going to give it a little bit of a chamfer and make it easier to slip into the cutout on the other piece. Now to make the ring for the glass, I've jointed together two pieces of walnut 
as you'll notice on the outer part of the ring, there are no biscuits. So there's no mechanical joint holding it together. And it could break very easily. So what I've done is cut two slots on that joint and finish the rest of the cut. And then cut two pieces of wood to fit in that slot. And all I've done is glue them in and it's now a strong mechanical joint. Then I bored out the holes so that I can attach it to the other part of the clock. Now all I need to do is turn this around and use the trim router and just round over the face. And the final piece that I made on the CNC was this ring so that I can secure the glass into place. Now that all the parts are cut out on the CNC, the next task is the all important fun job of sanding. I started off with 150 grit and I needed to pay special attention to the outside walls of the clock face ring and on the walls of the oval because the router bit left lines for every time it stepped down in a cut. Then I moved on to 220 and finished with 320 grit. Now I'm getting into the fun part of this project by the finishing. So, but first I have to prep the pony and to do that I need to cut the tabs off the back. So I put it in between some scrap plywood so that when I put it in the jaws of the vise, it's not gonna scratch the chrome. I cut off the, the tabs as close as possible to the backside and then put it on the bench sander and sand it off the remainder of the tabs as close as possible to the backside. And because the backside of the pony is concave or hollow, I'm using an epoxy resin to fill it in. And I'm going to be using eco epoxy UV epoxy to do that. I set it on my bench flat. I then mixed up some resin and I filled it in to just short of the edge. And because it's on the backside, I wasn't concerned about getting the air bubbles out. I just let it sit, level out, and let it set overnight. All right, I lied. You think the last part was fun? Now we're getting into the fun part. I set the pony and the oval to where I wanted it. Then I took a pencil and I traced the outline of the pony. Then I put masking tape around the sides, being careful to put the edge of the tape right down to the bottom edge of the sides. I mixed up a small amount of resin and I painted on the resin just past the lines and overlapped the lines. And I made sure to put enough resin on so it's not dry and it's not too thick in resin. I removed the tape so I have a nice clean edge. I'm pouring block sand over the areas that I painted with the resin, making sure the whole area is covered. I'm gonna let that set for a couple of hours. And now I mixed up a little bit more resin and I poured it entirely over top with just a very thin layer just to set the black sand in place. So when I put the pony back on, it's not gonna scratch the black sand and disrupt it. Now I'm using some fast set epoxy and I'm gonna put a little bit on the back side of the pony and set the pony into place. And I'm gonna let that set for at least 15 minutes before I pour another thin coat of resin. Now before I start pouring the next layer of resin on here, I'm just going to make sure this whole area and the pony is clean of any sort of fingerprints and all I'm using is some alcohol on a towel and I'm going to pour just a very thin layer of resin on the outside edges because the pony is just slightly raised and has a gap underneath it and I want it so that the resin will go underneath and prevent any air bubbles from coming out and I'm gonna pour this just very slowly.
I'm using a self-centering drill bit to mark the centers of the holes and then I'm going to use a smaller bit to pre-drill the holes for the screws. Well, this project is almost done. I just have a couple more things to do. First, I'm going to do a final pour of resin. You want to make sure this is absolutely level front to back and side to side because it's critical when you're pouring the resin. I'm going to pour the resin over the entire pony, the oval, and let it fill in inside the frame of the license plate holder. Well, that's it completely finished. I'm really happy the way it turned out, especially how the pony looks set on the black sand and then pouring the resin on top. Really makes it look sharp and it really stands out. Also my decision for changing the color on the license plate cover. Going from the blue and white to the black and silver also really makes it pop out. Now I did want to mention that this did take quite a while to cut out on the CNC. And that's because of the size and depth of the circle, the oval, and the inset for the oval. But there are alternatives for doing that. All you need is a standard or a plunge cut router, a straight bit with a bearing on the top, and make a jig or a template to cut out everything. Well, with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave me a thumbs up. Also, please leave me a comment or a question below. I'd really appreciate it. It would also help out my channel quite a bit. Also, if you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button, ring the notification bell for when I do my next video. You'll be notified right away. And please follow me on all the social media. I have all my links posted below. So, thanks for watching. Take care.